Okay, so my name is Indira Thomas. I teach the second grade at the Pebush Primary School. I teach about 10 students. Pebush is a really special community. It's different from the rest of the communities in um, Dominica. What stands out in Pebush is that there's a lot of singing, there's a lot of dancing down here, there's a lot of drumming down here, and it's really fun. It's a really fun community. But my personal experience during the hurricane, it, it sometimes brings tears to my eyes, yeah? During that time, I was pregnant. The morning when we looked outside, it was devastating. Trees were down, the mountains looked burnt. When we got to the school, the stage was gone. Upstairs building, the roof was gone. This school is also a hurricane shelter. When it was used as a shelter, it wasn't successful. Now that it is built, the people now depend on it and the people trust that it is as safe as possible. So now that it is built, that is the area for rescue for most people that do not have a safe place to go to. From flat ground zero to up there, real go a long way in saving lives and in building lives as well. My name is Anderson, Anderson Langdon. I'm the executive director of the Barbados Family Planning Association, or the BFPA. I grew up here in Barbados. Um, spent most of my life here until I went overseas to study in England. When I came back, I wanted an opportunity to contribute to making Barbados better. The BFPA, I saw as an opportunity, and I've been contributing ever since. Recently, last year, we had a series of fires. We lost one of our buildings, the building that houses youth programming. It was one of those things that our young people felt like they had lost the home. And it literally closed us for almost five months. We've been in this place since 1966. We you know it's deteriorating, it's not the best building. That made me wonder, you know, what happened? If we were flooded, what would happen? I'm not sure where this building would be or any of these structures that we would occupy would be in terms of hurricane preparedness. And we really wonder if we could be closed for any extended period of time, how that would impact the communities, the vulnerable groups that we reach. I must say, despite all the challenges, I love where I'm from. I wouldn't wish to be from any place else. I love my family and my son, he's six years old. I look at him and I say, oh, wow, world watch out. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to be part of something that provides an opportunity for young people to lead. My name is Paola Gomez, I'm uh, from Mexico City and I work as Education Officer in UNICEF. I was in charge of the response, the emergency response for the earthquake in five priority states, Oaxaca, Chiapas, Morelos, Puebla and Mexico City. Because the earthquake happened within school time, most of the kids they hadn't experienced in their whole life an earthquake and this was so intense, so we had moms that were in panic, uh, teachers that couldn't keep control on their students. In some cases, worst cases, teachers left the students in the classrooms. So we had to face those situations and the trauma after that in the kids. Two years after the earthquake, we're still seeing temporary learning spaces that are being used. School is not also for learning achievements, but it's, it's a distraction from them from the traumatic experience. So that's why going back to school is one of uh, UNICEF and a CLF priority for us. I have a, a little son and I would like for him to be in a country where he knows exactly what to do to avoid these panic situations. These humanitarian emergencies in the world are not, are not going to be over. Actually, this scenario is, is increasing, so we need to be prepared and they need to be prepared.